Welcome to the second mini series in the Benchmark webinar series. If you haven't already, check out the main webinar where we go through the CRISPR workflow. In this webinar, we're going to look at optimization. So what we'll cover is why optimization is important, some data from the benchmark report on what your fellow scientists are doing in regards to optimizing their CRISPR experiments, some strategies on how best to optimize in your own lab. And then lastly, we'll finish up with what we do at Synthago to optimize the cell lines that we edit for the life science community. So where does optimization fit in the editing workflow? So this comes after we've designed our editing strategy, designed our guides, and worked out how we're going to create our guide material. And optimization of transfection is really that pivotal point where you can determine the success of how well your experiment is going to go. This is where you would look at what settings you might need for either electroporation or lipid transfection or lentiviral transduction. What parameters might influence the editing efficiency uh, as, uh, and, and obviously the transfection efficiency or transduction efficiency of your particular cell line. Now this is a really pivotal step. I can't understate this. The success of your experiment is going to depend on how well you can optimize this potential step. So how do other people do it? Well, from the benchmark report, we have a lot of ideas around how other researchers are optimizing CRISPR experiments. We know that the vast majority of CRISPR researchers are actually doing optimization over 87%, which is fantastic. We highly recommend an optimization step in any of your CRISPR workflows. How many times should you optimize or how many conditions should you look at? Well, the average is about seven. And in addition, most people look at more than one guide RNA. So this is an important thing to consider as well. So most people are looking at an average of about four guide RNA sequences. And this is about what we would suggest as well, between three to four guide RNAs for any one particular CRISPR edit. And this is because it's very hard to predict what a good guide RNA looks like. So what are the, some of the key things if you want to optimize CRISPR that you have to be aware of. Firstly, if possible, we should be optimizing using the target cell line material and transfection methodology that you're going to use for your actual experiment. So that means if you're editing primary T cells, you should try to optimize on primary T cells. From the work we have done, it's very hard to find a surrogate cell line that will behave in the same way. So if you are using a, a surrogate cell line instead of your key cell line because of availability or because it's a very precious material, just be aware that that optimization may shift a little bit when you move into your actual experiment. We highly recommend optimizing using a positive control so that you're not wondering whether or not it's the guide that is not working or whether it's the different parameters that you're testing aren't quite right. Now this is species specific, so you can't use the positive control for humans, for mice uh, and vice versa or any other species. We do have a human controls kit, which includes all of the guides that you need for two different positive controls that we routinely use and that we highly recommend. We also have a few other controls that we can provide for different species. So if you're interested in that, please contact our technical support team and they will be able to give you those sequences and enable you to get those synthesized, uh, synthesized as synthetic guide RNA. And lastly, one thing to remember is that optimization is a learning process. It requires multiple rounds. So as we saw before, most people do seven different parameters when they're optimizing. However, this may not be enough. Optimization is a learning process. So we may need to do multiple rounds once we learn something about the cell line that we're working with. And we have to remember that any optimization is a balance between getting high enough editing efficiency versus mitigating cell death, because there's no point getting 99% editing efficiency if all of those cells are dead, because obviously we can't use them for the assays that we need them for. 
So another thing to consider is really this balance of editing efficiency versus cell death. So how do we optimize at Synthego? We're very lucky in that we have an automated facility which allows us to do this at an immense scale. And what I mean by that is we can test up to 200 conditions to identify the best way of transfecting any particular cell line. So in this example, we're looking at the optimization curve for THP1 cells. So this is an immune cell line. It can be a little tricky to work with. And what you can see here is every single one of these bar graphs is another different parameter that we've looked at for electroporation, which is what we use at Synthego for all of our cell editing. And each one of these bar graphs represents a different set of transfection parameters. And the output here is editing efficiency. So we're actually genotyping and measuring the editing efficiency of that edit in every single condition. And we do that across 200 conditions all at one time. Some people use transfection efficiency as a surrogate for editing efficiency. Now, this may work for some cell lines. However, just because you have transfected cells doesn't mean you have edited cells, which is why we go one step further and actually look at what we're trying to measure, which is editing efficiency. So that is what we recommend as well. Now this gives us the benefit of being able to identify conditions that we may otherwise have missed, especially if we only did a handful of parameters when we tested transfection efficiency. So for example, if we had pulled out the standard protocol that's available online for THP1 cells, we would have only achieved a 7% editing efficiency. Now this really isn't good enough for us. We really have to be achieving much higher. And so with this automated approach, we're able to really increase that editing efficiency and find a, a protocol that gives us over 80% of editing efficiency in these relatively hard to transfect cells. Now the whole timeline for this is about three days. So because we have an automated platform, we're able to do this relatively quickly. And most of that time is actually just waiting for sequencing to come back. Now this is really important because we are often limited in what we can do by the cell lines we can manipulate. And so at Synthego, we don't want to limit you in the kind of research that you can do. So we are able to optimize many different kinds of tissue types. This is just some examples of the top 10 tissue types that we've optimized and the numbers indicate how many cell lines are within that. And in total, we have optimized over 300 cell lines. And these come from, as, as you can see, a wide range of different tissue types. So we really want to try to support your research. And if you do want to allow us to edit some cells for you, every single one of those cell lines, if they haven't already, will go through this 200 point optimization process. We've already got a large database of, of the ones we have done as well. So there is a strong likelihood that we won't have to do it again. We've already got those settings on hand. So I hope I've been able to show you that optimization is critical for how well your CRISPR experiment is going to go. We have a lot of resources on synthego.com slash resources that will help you determine how to best optimize your particular cell type based on the application that you're doing. And one thing that I would recommend is our website is also searchable. So if you're looking for something in particular, definitely use this magnifying glass that is present on the top navigation of every website, every page within the Synthego website. So in that you can just search what you're looking for and get a whole list of results because we do have a lot of resources on our website and we want to make it easy for you to navigate through that. And as a reminder, every cell line that we edit at Synthego is optimized with that 200 point optimization to really ensure that we can, we can enable the best editing efficiency possible in the correct cell line for your work. So thank you for joining me. Please check out the other short videos in this series. So if you haven't already, check out why tools matter for a CRISPR workflow. In this presentation, we looked at optimization 
and how that can influence your editing workflow. In the next webinar, I'll talk about analysis and how to really analyze the editing efficiency that you're looking at. And then also I can cover, I'll cover single cell cloning as well as how to really make the best decision. Should you do this yourself or does it make more sense to outsource? The answer may surprise you. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at synthego.com slash contact. And please join me in the next webinar on analysis.